know for, for decades that uh, UV, UVB and UVA are crucial to induce uh, pigmentation and they're also able to worsen pigmentary disorder. What has been demonstrated uh, since the past few years is the key role of the visible light in inducing pigmentation and also worsening some pigmentary disorder. And uh, what has been clearly demonstrated is that it's only the part of the high energy visible light, the blue and the violet light, that are responsible for this hyperpigmentation and also worsening of pigmentary disorder such as melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or actinic lentigo. So there are now very strong evidences demonstrating the, the impact of visible light. We know also what are the uh, mechanisms involved. In fact, it's, it's quite interesting because we demonstrated that on the surface of melanocyte, there are sensors, the same that we have in the eyes, called opsin free that will directly sense the blue light. And then it will activate some downstream pathways and at the end increase the, uh, the, the production of uh, melanocytic enzymes such as tyrosinase, TRP1, or DCT. And what is also very interesting because we, uh, it, it was demonstrated that blue light is inducing pigmentation, but it's a very long lasting pigmentation as compared to UVB or UVA induced pigmentation. And we also demonstrated that after being stimulated by visible light, the melanocytes uh, will complex tyrosinase. And when tyrosinase is complexed, it stabilizes its activity, explaining why we have such a prolonged hyperpigmentation after being exposed to visible light. In fact, uh, when it comes to visible light, uh, it's much more constant through the year and through the latitude because the visible light that is coming is roughly the same. So we are all exposed all the year to visible light. Uh, so it's very important to keep this in mind because we can worsen the, for example, melasma or other pigmentary disorder every time in the year. But what has been also demonstrated is that it's not only visible light. For example, there is a strong synergy between long wave UVA and visible light. And unfortunately, and it's very important in our clinical practice, unfortunately, when uh, physicians are uh, advising some sunscreen or when patients are taking their sunscreen, they are mostly uh, looking at the SPF which is the UVB protection. And in fact, they don't look at the UVA and visible light protection. And when it comes to pigmentation, those wavelengths are critical and are working together. So it's mandatory to, when you choose a uh, sunscreen for melasma, for example, is to have sh for sure a good SPF, a good UVB protection, but a good PPD or good UVA protection and also the protection against visible light. Now there is no doubt that um, visible light is playing a key role. The main problem in clinical practice is how to choose the sunscreen because many sunscreens are claiming to uh, protect against blue, uh, blue light. And unfortunately, so far there is no uh, clear um, um, uh, sun factor uh, that is dedicated for visible light. So it's very difficult for physicians but also for patients to choose. Uh, what is clear is that we need uh, to have a tinted product because, in fact, it's easy to understand. You have to block uh, the wavelengths and so they don't reach the opsin-free receptor. So it's tinted product. And on top of this, you have to also uh, have a very good UVA protection. So you have to seek for product with the highest UVA protection factor as possible. So good UVB. SPF, but it's easy to see. A, a very high level of UVA protection, especially in a long wave UVA, and on top of that, tinted products uh, that are able to block the visible light. So, and that's also the, the main uh, point of, uh, of improvement because we have now some tinted products, but uh, some, most of them are adapted for intermediate skin. If you have very fair skin or very dark skin, most of the time, it's an issue. So I think there's a way of improvement in the future, but waiting for that, for, for example, for my patient with very dark skin, uh, I recommend to use a very good UVA and UVB uh, protection sunscreen. And on top of that, 
to use some makeup with a very high amount of iron oxide that can nicely block the, the visible light. So they use the, the sunscreen and then they put the makeup to protect the visible light. For the future, there's a lot of, uh, uh, to improve. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the cosmeticity and especially for, and the, the, the tinted uh, product adapt for any type of, uh, of skin type that's mandatory. Um, we talk about, and my, my talk was on pigment, um, pigmentation, but we know that visible light is also inducing oxidative stress. And so it's not yet demonstrated as, uh, as well as, in, uh, as it is for pigmentary disorder, but there is strong evidence suggesting that uh, visible light is also participating to uh, the aging process. So, for example, for uh, when it comes to prevent skin aging, I would recommend to use a very high UVA protection and either uh, a tinted product, but in this case, we can use antioxidant within the, the sunscreen. So a very potent UVA protection with antioxidant within the, the sunscreen. That could be a very nice and very powerful uh, sunscreen to prevent skin aging. And probably also for pigmentation, there are, uh, there are some data suggesting that this antioxidant might also play a role. By themselves, they are not enough, but combined with tinted product, that could be very interesting. And of course, combining with uh, depigmenting agents, that would be uh, great. So you can combine, protect from the sun, and also treat uh, the, the hyperpigmentation. So many things to do. Uh, if I would like to summarize, I would say, no doubt now that, uh, that visible light, high energy visible light, blue and violet light, is playing a key role in pigmentation. This is not only visible light, you have to think about UVB, but also and mainly long wave UVA. And in daily practice for all darker skin types or uh, any type of skin type, but with a pigmentary uh, disorder, you have to advise a sunscreen combining a good protection against UVB, but also mainly UVA and visible light. And so far, you have to use tinted product for protecting uh, your patient.